Hey, John from Agile Off-Road. Uh, the other day, a customer asked me to show him a few things on the Revel. And uh, we've done so much of this thing over the years, I've never really actually done a walkthrough on it. So let's do a walkthrough. Um, I'll point out everything, but pretty, I'm not gonna cover any of the Revel stuff. Uh, everybody can find that on YouTube, whatever. But basically, this is a 2021 Winnebago Revel. So it's uh, based on a 144 Sprinter. 2500 four wheel drive. And I'll talk about mostly the upgrades that we've done to the Sprinter, and I'll point that out as a Sprinter. And if it's a Revel specific upgrade, I'll kind of point it out as a Revel specific. But for the most part, most everything's applicable to the um, Sprinter chassis. So again, this is a 144, 2500 four wheel drive. So we're gonna start at the front, and I'll point out a lot of the things that we've done. Um, underneath, we've got our engine skid. There's also a transmission skid. This does not have any other skids underneath it. It's just primarily got the engine. You can kind of see it gets beat up a little bit. Um, this does get off-roaded quite a bit. Um, it's got our Telluride front bumper in here. This has a 12,000 pound Xenon winch. As well, you can also do like, a, we recommend a 12,000. Uh, you can do like the VR series Warren. We're kind of fans of Warren. This also has a brand new product that we're, we're starting to look at the Yankum products. This actually has a Yankum fair lead. Uh, they call this their groove fair lead. It's just uh, a loop on there. It's actually really cool. We'll have more information on that. Distronic will function, parttronic will function, everything will work. This also has our um, Ferrata light bar. We had LP9s on it. Uh, we're big fans of the Baja designs on all your forward facing lights. You'll see that we've got them up top. I think those are the linkables. I think it's basically the XL series or XL80 series are really nice. As well, we've got our fog light kit in the front. This is a plug and play kit. This has the pros in it. We also do the SAEs, uh, amber. We did, I did amber. I kind of hate amber at night, but in the day they look cool. So ambers look good in the day. Um, we'll look underneath the hood and we've got our CA tuned hood struts, which are kind of cool. They help you to hold the, the hood up. Over here in this corner, we've got our onboard air. This is one of the biggest features that I use on the Sprinter. Uh, I'm running 285, 75, 17 Cooper tires, which I really, really love the Coopers. And these are on some beadlock venture wheels from, um, uh, from uh, Black Rhino. They're 38 millimeter offset and they have the Coopers. These are the AT3 uh, XLs. I, I absolutely love this tire for the uh, uh, for the street and off-road. They work really, really well. But our onboard air kit here, we're venting, pulling our air from inside. Pretty simple setup. I'm just running one chuck right now. We usually run two to the back. Um, and this is a Revel specific thing that we do. We relocated, on this one it's the Timberline in 21, they went to a Timberline heater. We can also relocate the S-Bar heater. So we mount it up in here, brings it up in here. We suck the air from inside of here where it's just cleaner. It's a little bit more serviceable. This one's super easy. The main, main thing we do is we add a heat exchanger in here. And this allows us to actually use the engine and not run the furnace to run the house. Uh, we can get supply you more details on that if you call us on that. It works super, super good. A lot of cold weather people like that. As well, we can use the furnace to heat up the engine in the morning. Over here, there's a small little pump. Draws very, very little. There's a switch on the dash. Uh, we can cover that in more detail, but that's a kind of a Revel specific relocation. We do that for both the S-Bar as well as we do it for the Timberline. We do quite a few of those. And that can be something that can be done in a regular Sprinter as well. So uh, just nice placement inside of here. Um, a kind of it underneath the hood, if you'll notice LP9s, there's no big wiring harness in here. Um, we'll show you the switch on the dash. It's pretty sweet. We've got the relays underneath. There's not a whole bunch of stuff underneath here. I'm also just got factory switches in it. Uh, uh, winch, whenever you're doing a winch, you wanna mount that directly to the battery. Don't go to the starter. Don't go to anywhere else to run the power directly to the battery. You, can't, you do wanna run the ground directly to the chassis. Stay away from the battery. You wanna leave the battery isolated on the ground. So that's kind of it in the front. Um, Everything else, yeah, pretty, pretty much stock. Um, suspension, I, I always tell people, well, this has a rip kit on it, assuming everybody knows what the rip kit is, but 
The rip kit, what we're doing with that is we're adding additional spring force over the factory strut or an aftermarket strut. In this case, I think I, think I got Bill Stein struts on this right now, and uh, they work really, really well. You're gonna get the best bang for your buck by running a, fact, a strut over an auxiliary shock, although we do have our auxiliary shocks on this, and our auxiliary shocks, this is our newest design, really nice lower built on, built, billet lower mount, bolts right on, better positioning on the upper shock. And as well, we stroke that shock a ton. We're stroking that shock almost a full five inches, um, which is kind of key. You know, you could have this really bitching shock set up on there, but if it's just sitting back there idling back and forth, not doing much, not gonna do you a whole lot. So uh, let's take a closer look at our auxiliary shock mount. This is the brand new one that we designed for the 2023 all wheel drive. And guess what? It just happens to fit the four wheel drive. So this is a four wheel drive. This is our 20, I don't know, our 20 chassis, 21 chassis, doesn't matter. It's a VS30 chassis. All your four wheel drives are gonna be the same. So we're, we've installed this billet lower mount here. You're gonna see, um, has two bolts here. On the four wheel drive, you're only gonna have one upper bolt. This van's been off-road a ton. We've not had one issue with it. Um, along with that, the upper mount's changed. So we've removed kind of the top here. You'll see where the upper mount kind of basically mounts in the same place where they did in the past. Tabs come down further. They'll go in, uh, in here. The other thing to keep bear in mind is that we are actually, we don't run a boot on this because we're actually stroking this shock the whole distance. Um, I think it's like four and seven eighths or four and three quarters. We're stroking the shock almost the complete way from full extension to full compression. So we're getting maximum uh, mechanical advantage out of that. Um, so there's the new mount. The other one's just a mirror of it and they're working on that side. But you can see this nice little billet mount and half inch bolt going all the way through. There is, just so you know, there's torque specs right on this. Um, it gives you the torque value for this bolt and the torque value for this. This thing is just a time saver as well. We do not need to relocate the sway bar like we did in the past. So that again, that'll be a time saver for the installers. And if you're a do-it-yourself for person you want to tackle this, it makes the job way, way easier. So check it out. Uh, here's a little bit better look at the wheels, bead locks. Uh, love these RPV valves. These are from uh, Apex design, they allow you to air down really quick. We've got our big brake system on this, both front and rear. We've got the Alcon brakes. We're the uh, exclusive US distributor, actually world distributor of those. Those have the offset correction built in, so they're gonna stick out a little bit more. Um, can pose a problem, especially with the bigger tires. You can see this one's clearance. We're not hacking and we're cutting this. This tire is technically 34. On the bottom line, it's, it's two inches taller than the 275. And you'll notice that we're not really hacking up this as well as back here. We even have our whole interior all in there. So when you're out on trips, mud, things like that, debris, you're keeping all that crap from out from underneath the vehicle. Um, again, the rip kit, we're adding spring force, um, adding dampening forces, and uh, real, real improved ride. Uh, let's kind of check out the rear. This has, uh, yeah, the Rebels don't come with side ladders, so this has the aluminous ladder which is real simple, kind of just simple ladder climb up and down it, lightweight. Um, you can see I've actually hit it in several spots. Um, you don't want this thing to really to shear off. If you were to hit something, <laughs> you kind of want this thing to hold up. Uh, it'll protect the side over here. And up top, we could get a better look at that, but we've got some of our accessories up top. Um, Max Trax holders, bring four. You got a sprinter, carry four, don't carry two. I carried two and needed four. Uh, we've got our leveling tray up top. You can see I just put a shovel up there. I did, it's funny, because I think I've only used the shovel for digging ditches for dumping my duty, but um, uh, it's nice to carry a shovel, and I'm carrying a real shovel up there. Um, that's one that you can lean on and tell other people what to do. It's nice and tall, so I recommend a tall shovel. As well, we've got the brand new all-in-one Starlink, uh, our star mounts all-in-one. That's 12 volt. And it's worked out really, really well. It's got a separate router in it. Uh, it's worked out bitch, and I've had it on several trips, took it to Mexico, worked really well, and just came back from 10 days in Utah. It was fantastic. It draws very, very little power now. Um, so we'll kind of show you a little bit more on the top, maybe get you a better view of that. In the rear, um, 
big brakes, obviously same wheel and tire. This has our two and a half inch shock. These now have a, uh, um, some new valve codes that we're really, really happy with. This is a much, this is a legitimate two and a half outside diameter shock. So it's gonna be about a two and a quarter, slightly bigger piston. So it's the biggest one on the market for the, uh, for the sprinters. As well, it's got our rip rear spring. The key to the rear spring is eliminating and removing the factory strut, or excuse me, the factory spacer, as well as that parabolic spring. Uh, that's designed for carrying load. So if you're adding a load spring on one of these, it's really not gonna articulate real well when you're off-road. This thing works exceptionally well off-road. Um, you also notice very small trimming in the front. And we did a really, really clean job. We actually kind of moved this whole fender back. You can kind of see it here. Normally would see the, the mud flap would be right here and it'd be running into that tire. So we make this look super, super clean. Uh, Glenn did a really, really nice job on this. And uh, up here in the front, you'll see where it's rubbing, um, but it just rubs off-road. I'm okay with it rubbing. Uh, there's no sharp edges. We keep it really nice and tight there. And we're also using the full stroke of that shock in the rear. Um, we now have our um, double shear brackets, top and bottom on this. I actually was able to jack this up using a big, a big floor jack off the lower shock mount, and it picked this thing up off the ground. It's really, really strong. And then that upper mount uh, gets rid of that issue with the upper bolt. Um, we're going, to we're going to take a look at the rear. Uh, this has two of our main things on here. Um, basically, our rear door organizer for the passenger side, which is a large aluminum plate, and you have access to it here. You can open and close the door. You have our, our uh, icon on here. You'll also see that we're not stopping the door when it swings open. We actually have time plates. Both of these stops are timed out. They, they time out in the identical spot, exactly where the factory wants to do it, which is right here. Uh, one's not hitting before the other. It's kind of been a lot of work. Um, and uh, this has a Backwoods box on it. Backwoods makes great boxes. This is, a, I don't know, their expedition box, I think they call it. Um, I did remove some of the outside plates. I find them kind of redundant, you know, to have these extra parts on there just for like aesthetics. I actually took them off, they weighed a little bit more. Um, so I lightened up the box by doing that. Inside of my box, you can see some of the items that I carry. Um, I do carry fuel on some of my trips. Primarily I've used this, I've used this to give to other people. This is a small one I carry right now, it's empty. But I put on the inside, I, I don't know, I, I just think it's cleaner. Um, not a big fan of gas tanks on the outside of my Sprinter. Um, this has my, uh, I've got some recovery. I got recovery gear up top, my Factor 55 stuff. And then this is some new product from Yankum. I carry it in here. As well behind that, I've got my H1 Hummer Jack uh, with the Agile plate in there to lift this thing up, which works awesome. So all that sits in here. There's a nice shelf that the guys at Backwoods makes. You can adjust it. I've got it pretty high up and this allows me to put gear in below. Um, this one's got a, I don't know what size this tank is, I forget. I think it's like, uh, I forget how they, they size these, but it's the tall tank, a little bit wider, fits in there really nice, and I've got a little fire pit. Down here in a lot of our areas, we can't, we're not supposed to run open flames or you know, coal type flames, whatever you wanna call it. It's gotta have an off switch, so these have off switch. This has some other gear in there that I keep. Super simple, really nice heavy duty box. Um, Again, it's pretty simple looking. You know, you can see where I've just bolted stuff right to it. Um, works really well. And uh, nice high quality box. It's got our plate on there. And you can see when you open this up, time's out. It also, we get it to swing quite a ways open. That allows it to get into that almost past center to where it stays open. As well, we're doing that with our tire carrier. Nice lightweight tire carrier. Um, this is, I think the biggest we've run is up to a 30, I think we had one guy running a 37, which was an odd thing, but normally this is a big tire and it's sitting on there and it works really, really well. Again, opens up all the way. Um, you do want to pay attention. These doors get kind of heavy. In here, you can see how, we've, how I store my stuff. So I do have an ARB fridge in here. Let's see here. I got an ARB fridge because I like my beverages and uh, got the factory fridge inside. So I did add this, and I think I'm pulling the power from right here. 
You'll notice that if you're, a, if you're familiar with the Rebels, you'll notice that this side's different than that. I did do a battery system in this. I've got roughly 660 amp hours, which is, has really been made it stress-free for these RVs. I think, I almost think like 600 or 900 amp hours is becoming the new 300, almost like the new standard. Uh, people are wanting more, more power in their rigs, allows them to boondock a little bit longer, not be stressed out as much. Or they'll go with something like a simple like 400. This does have a second alternator. I haven't upgraded it yet. I'm still running the factory alternator from Winnebago, which isn't the greatest. We'll upgrade that. Um, if you're also a rebel, so another rebel thing is I did take off the chingus or the shield underneath the bed and allows me to carry a few other items up there. I got a, a couple of bags with some gear in it. I carry my little doormat, and then I think th those are lights, uh, outdoor lights, LED lights that stick up. So we can op you know, bring this thing up and down. And one of the things that I did in the floor, I, we added these tracks in, which bring us tracks from right to left instead of front to rear. So it allows for a little bit better um, uh, tie down. If you're interested in doing that, we do have the templates for doing that in the Rebels. It's a bit of work, but uh, we can get it done. And I got a nice little door pouch in the back. This is one from, I think the Overland Gear guy. Yeah, Overland Gear guy. He made these for me. I had to make them super deep so I can carry just a ton of crap in there. Um, you do, when you have them that wide, you do have to have an open space right here. So that's kind of the inside. And um, got my little up dog step. I just find that that works simple. Get in and out, I just need the one side. I can do all my stuff. All that gear. Um, additional water tank underneath, 28 gallons. So I'm carrying 28 gallons. Oh, inside I've got an SMB 35, 34 gallon tank, a replacement tank. Um, and then I added a heating loop in there. We can do that at the shop. We actually are recommending it. A lot of our customers are, reason why they're wanting to put water on the inside is because they're cold weather people. So we add a simple heating loop. We tie into the to the house system there. And we do a loop around there, tie it back in, works bitching. Um, so if you're interested in having that done, let us know, we'll give you a quote on that. And the tank underneath, super simple, bolts right in. We do have a gravity feed here. And then other than that, you just need a simple little hose. Oh, they're in here somewhere, but it just plugs in. Plugs into there, plugs into there. You flip the switches and it will suck water out of there into that tank and it works pretty sweet. So I love that for going to Mexico. Um, but honestly, Mex in Mexico water's not bad to get, but um, sure is nice leaving with that. Um, I did some lights up top, switches are inside. So that's kind of like a porch light for me if I'm working back here. Uh, then I got them in the back corners too. Those are some Baja design lights that I put up there. Um, I do carry my little recovery plug in there. That's that one that goes to D-shackle, but I flip it around so nobody sees it. Now everybody knows where it is, it's right there. And it's not locked. Um, <clears throat> come over to the side. Uh, amp sips. We've been doing the amps on, a, on sprinters forever. Uh, just so you know, we, we, can, we can do these even when they didn't have them for the newer chassis, the VS30 chassis. Now they've got it where it's plugged in. This one still uses the door switch. So you can see where I've got the door switch right here. But we also tie it into the doors here and we tie into the wiring on the doors. But now with the new OBD port, one works pretty slick. Um, most of these other features in here are pretty much the interior I've pretty much left alone. We did add additional shelves on the inside, which we sell, and we did add additional pantry shelves, which we sell. Uh, one cool thing I just added not that long ago, since we're carrying so much water, I added a Seagull water filter in there, and it works really, really well. It's a separate one. You can kind of see it right here. Allows us to give drinking water to the dogs, and you know we, we're not carrying drinking water on the floor in there anymore, so it works out pretty slick. Um, Got inhabit mats all the way around. Got them in the front and the rear. They're super slick. They're great because these mats are dirty and they look clean, so I love it. You just come in here and you just, you just whisk this thing out. It makes you feel good about your cleaning house and a lot of the dirt sits in the mat and it looks bitching. So uh, I, I really love them. And then when you want to clean them, take them out, 
brick and power wash them. Like take out your pressure washer and wash them. They're pretty bitching. Um, kind of about it. Um, oh, gray water. So I was telling you that we did the ACGB. I did ACGB and then I put the gray, you'll notice on this van, there's not a whole lot of RV shit hanging down below. So when you look underneath this, you'll notice on this side and on the other side, there's not a bunch of stuff coming down. Actually, the gray water tank's tucked up in on this side. And when I dump the gray water, I've just got a little ball valve in there and I open the ball valve. So I go underneath there and open it. Um, and it works out pretty slick. And that was to allow me to put the ACGB in there. Um, I think that's kind of about it. A lot of these features are specific to the Rebel. If you want more information on them, you should contact us. We can help you out with fuel. We can help you out with water. We can help you out with the door boxes. The Loveland tray up top is bitching. I carry four boxes up there that carry all my gear in there. Uh, the, Star, the Starlink mount is really cool. It's 12 volt. Um, try and get, see, me, see the picture of our dash in here. So you can see I got my main switch. This is a DC to DC charger. We're actually can charge the chassis battery off of the house battery, which it's doing that right now. If I turn that off, um, you'll see the amperage draw will go down. Um, this was an alternator switch. It used to be mounted back here. I now have it mounted on the dash. We actually do turn off the alternators on these. So when you're off road, you turn the alternator off. It makes a big, big difference. It adds about, Depending on the alternator, probably adds 12 to 18 horsepower to your engine. Anytime you can get 12 to 18 horsepower on an engine on a switch, it's pretty badass. Um, water pump, water pump, and then this is the Starlink right here, this one that's lit up. So I can actually, at night, I can turn it off, but right now it's converted to 12 volt. That thing just sips electricity now. So it's not hooked up. The inverter doesn't even need to be on, although typically I leave this inverter on. So don't know if that's good or bad. And um, so, one of the coolest things that we really enjoy about our rig now is, uh, you know, like this our, is this our living room here. We fix our drinks and cocktails in there. I do have an ice maker, which is really cool. I can bolt my, put my ice maker in there because I've got tons of power. But we put in a, um, along with the power system that we did, we're also offering the Rome rig power system. So if you have a Winnebago Rebel, you want power like what I've got, we can do the Rome rig systems which have been working out fantastic. And one of the other cool things that they've got is a beat box. And when you're cruising down the road and or you're hanging out uh, with this system, I can run this off the house battery. And we can listen to music. So it works out great when you're driving, but when you're hanging out and you want to have some music, um, we have some great tunes that we'll listen to all night long and power is not an issue. So with the combination of the Rome rig power system in one of these rebels and the um, beatbox, you can kind of party all night long and uh, party like a rock star. Get up the next morning and go wheeling and uh, make sure to turn your alternator back on. <laughs> so you can charge back up. But this thing's been fantastic. Um, you also see here's a kind, of a, kind of these cool little things we've got for mounting the iPads on here. These are really neat. We just got these in a couple of months ago. And you can see I've got an iPad. It literally just snaps right into there. And I'm loving, I'm using the Gaia now when I'm off road. And then I've got my phone here in this one. So it works super, super slick few things that we've done. Oh, the dash. I should show you the dash. This thing has a cool dash in it. Um, so we've been doing a lot of um, kind of, I don't know if you call it software development or just turning on features that Mercedes has existing in the dash. So one thing is the rear camera. People want to drive with the rear camera on we can turn that on. Okay, that's a cool feature. We can also lift up the rear camera so you can actually see stuff out the back. So we offer those, those are on our website. But we've also got an AMG dash in this. So the AMG dash has a different features in it. I can also turn off 
traction control, not traction control, excuse me, I can turn off my lane assist uh, permanently. So when you get into the van, all you do is just go in and hit the button just to confirm you know your lane assist is off. It also turns off wind assist, attention assist, and lane assist all in the same feature. It is phenomenal. For anybody that drives a vehicle and they've had that wind assist come on, it can be a little overwhelmed, a little bit surprising. You know, driving down the 395, you're passing a vehicle, you know what's coming up, and then all of a sudden the wind assist wants to, to brake the vehicle. Um, that feature doesn't exist in this Sprinter. Um, I've got a little bit more power in this Sprinter as well. I can also fold in my mirrors so that um, when I automatically, uh, you know, shut the, shut, lock the vehicle, I'll be able to, f to fold my mirrors in. But uh, so pretty, pretty cool features. Um, so for another Rebel specific thing that we do, this is something from uh, Rome Rig as well. It's actually a, a panel that um, gives you your power port up top here. So the one that factory is down there, we do tie into that one down there, bring it up into here. But you've also got your awning where your awning light your awning itself, your running boards, and your door light are all illustrated correctly, nicely, all with the same switches. It's a real clean setup. So now if you're telling like your buddy to turn on your light or oh, deploy your awning, you can actually go in and look at it and see what he's really doing. So you don't have to go in there, oh, I'll do it. You know, It's like the door light, the door light. You got your door light outside, done deal, you know? So real, real nice feature, that is a Rebel specific thing. So we covered quite a bit. One of the biggest features that I really enjoyed while driving this van, mainly off-road. You know, when I'm off-road with a group of people, um, it's a lot less stressful for me. I'm not worrying about shifting into four-wheel drive, low range, all that has been the ARB locker. So if you're not familiar with what a locker does, the locker is in the rear end. And the locker locks up the driver's side and the passenger side tire so that they're locked and they're turning the same rotation. Normally it's an open differential. So if you make a turn, one tire can turn more than the other. When you're off road, there could be a lot of situations where you want those both to have the same amount of traction. So the ARB locker has been absolutely crucial to the way this thing handles off road. I do not run my, I do not turn off ESP. I do not run it in full drive that much. And I do not run it in low range that much. I can primarily get where most people will go with their vans in low range, four wheel drive. I can do it in two wheel drive, high range, locked. A lot in effortlessly. The other thing we've done too, this does have big tires on it. We've re-geared it. We talked about reprogramming it. We can put in 418 gears on these. It's, it's a factory gear, factory Mercedes gear. Um, and that will lower the ratio and uh, that will in turn allow us to, when we're running these bigger tires to correct for the power. So the power that I've got, the throttle response that this has, this has been kind of like a really, really sweet package. Regearing it, the size tire, not too big to where I'm having to hack the hell out of it. Uh, we've kept it pretty clean. Um, nice wheels with the correct offset. Um, this has been just a really, really nice, capable vehicle off-road. Now, granted, it's a Sprinter. It's big. It's bulky. It's not going to go everywhere, uh, basically because it's so damn big. The other thing is it's going to be fairly incapable in some areas. You know, there's certain things you're just not going to take this through. But if you do all these features, you put on these bigger tires, you get the bit really cool looks of it, um, and you put in the locker, you're gonna find yourself doing things effortlessly off-road that you're gonna see people with four-wheel drive sprinters in low range kind of struggling to do. You know, um, not saying they're completely stressed out, but they're spinning their wheels and tires and you know, going up hills and things, and this thing will climb right up it. So uh, one of the biggest features has been the locker for the off-road. So got all the features here. We can help you out whether you got a 2500 four wheel drive or you've got a Rebel or you got a Storyteller. We've got one here the guy's going to town on over here on the rack. And uh, we do all that stuff here. You need more information on that, give us a shout, let us know. Um, you can set up, take a look at our website. We got a lot of, a lot of cool stuff there. And um, happy to help you out. And if you ever wanna go out to the desert, send me a message. Um, I love going. Since November of 
last year, I think it's, tw well, it's 23 now since November of last year, I think I've been home three weekends. Every weekend, I love going out. I love going out and being part of the community. Uh, we've done the Mojave Trail. We've done uh, uh, Anza Borrego, just a short jaunt down the hill. Uh, we've done some places in Arizona. We've done some snow driving. Uh, we've done some cool stuff. It's really, really fun taking these sprinters out, finding out their capabilities, and being able to take you out and explore in your vehicle. It's better than going to a campsite, let me tell you. Way, way better. So uh, hit us up. Let us know what you need. Uh, if you have any questions about it, leave, leave, leave us a comment, um, and uh, we'll try and answer them because I'm sure I forgot something that somebody's going to ask. So, All right. Take care, all. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching.